Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Aside from Australia, Africa's paleogene fossil record is the most incomplete of all continents. Preferring to work in more hospitable climes with a lack of tropical diseases and dangerous wildlife, paleontologists working on Alter Earth have only recently begun to uncover the Eocene deposits of North Africa. Most efforts have concentrated on the spectacularly rich fossil beds of the Fayoum region of Egypt which are famous for their highly endemic and oftentimes bizarre paleofauna. Indeed, the animals that dwelt in the late Eocene tropical forests of Fayoum were quite unlike anything found on the northern continents. In place of big tyrannosaurs, abelisaurs took the niche of apex predator. Of the three genera of these stubby-armed carnivores discovered at Fayoum, one was a true giant, Teratotaurus disneyi, the largest abelisauroid ever found in Africa, measured up to 12 metres in length and possessed a pair of robust brow horns above the eyes. Presumably, this frightening behemoth preyed on several species of titanosaurs and hadrosaurs with which it shared its environment. The other Fayoum abelisaurs were significantly smaller, ranging between 5 and 8 metres long. Interestingly, other distinctly Laurasian groups, particularly Maniraptorans, aside from birds, were very rare in Eocene Africa. The only non-avian Maniraptorans known from Fayoum were the small Cenodromiosaur Apophyraptor and the weird semi-aquatic Cassaraptor. However, a couple of more basal Salurosaurs, both yet to be formally named, were present in Eocene Egypt. One of these was a very basal animal placed close to Bicentenaria on phylogenetic trees, while the other was a member of Tyranoraptora, not much is known about these basal salurosaurs, apart from the fact they were roughly two metre long carnivores. Even more surprisingly, two genera of highly derived noosaurids were present at Fayoum. The larger of these was initially thought to be an ornithomimosaur, and was named accordingly, Numidomimus africanus. However, when additional fossil material attributed to the animal was discovered, Numidomimus was demonstrated to be a late surviving Elaphrosaurine noosaurid. Although fossils belonging to this genus are of rather poor quality, enough has been found to establish that this animal was a large, highly cursorial herbivore. The other Fayum noosaurid was even more unusual and unexpected. Much smaller than its cursorial cousin, the 2.5 metre long Tetraprotodon horosai was one of the strangest of all paleogene dinosaurs. Taking the already weird noosaurid dentition to new levels of oddness, Tetraprotodon possessed two greatly enlarged and forward-facing teeth at the tips of its upper and lower jaws. Taken together, these massive teeth formed a beak-like structure used by this animal to grab fruit, leaves and small vertebrates. It appears that, with the absence of oviraptorosaurs in Eocene Africa, Tetraprotodon and its relatives claimed the niche of beaked omnivorous generalist on the continent. Most of the herbivorous dinosaurs found at Fayoum were also endemics. Leaving aside the aforementioned titanosaurs and hadrosaurs, which showed clear similarities to contemporaneous European relatives, all smaller ornithischians demonstrate closer affinities with South American ornithischians. Of the four genera found here that have been recovered from the fossil beds, Two were basal iguanodontians, Morisaurus and Pheomodon. Both of these were slightly built, swift herbivores that have occasionally been classified as members of Elasmeria, although they probably fell outside this clade. The smallest ornithischian from late Eocene Egypt, as far as we can tell, was Mansuria elegans, measuring just one metre long and weighing as little as five kilograms. The phylogenetic position of Mansuria is uncertain, but it almost certainly belongs in a basal position within Ornithopoda. The last small ornithischian was the diminutive, atypical hadrosauromorph, Paludicursor osiris, a slender, fully bipedal animal that rightly holds the record for the smallest hadrosauroid ever found. At 3 metres long and weighing just 100 kilograms, this dinosaur is renowned not only for its small size, but for its adaptations for bipedal running. Paludicursor seems a rather primitive creature when compared to the derived hadrosaurs from the northern continent, with its closest known relatives hailing from mid-Cretaceous Asia. In all likelihood, the ancestors of Paludicursor island-hopped across the Tethys Sea at some point during the late Cretaceous. 
Other ornithischians made a similar journey during the Middle Eocene. The final group of herbivorous dinosaurs present at Fayum were the semi-aquatic Thessalosaurines. Chunkier cousins of the slender Rhododromids and Zuthosaurids, these animals first reached northern Africa at some point during the Middle Eocene. Those genera found in Late Eocene Egypt were close relatives of the East Asian Irrawaddia, suggesting a pattern of dispersal across the Tethys from Asia. As these animals were strong swimmers, such a crossing would have proved a relatively simple matter. Once established on the African continent, these dinosaurs thrived and underwent an explosive evolutionary radiation there during the early Oligocene. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Thanks for watching everyone. Expect more on Eocene Africa in a couple of weeks, as there is substantially more to say about the faunas of this interesting region. Next week's episode will be another Congo cryptid profile, this time focusing on the Enedi tiger, an alleged living saber-toothed cat. Until then, cheerio.